Welcome back to Toso Pavilion in Santa Clara, California. The second game of the semifinals with the Gonzaga Bulldogs battling the St. Mary's Gales. And hi again, I'm Steve Fiziak along with Dan Belwamini. And this is a game of a great local interest to the Bay Area. USF has been knocked off. The number one seed, Santa Clara, has been knocked off. But St. Mary's, one of the hottest teams in the West Coast Conference, winners of 12 of their last 13, will now take on one of the very best offenses in the league. Great outside shooting team in the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Yeah, and a very overachieving Gonzaga team, a team that was picked last at yeah. the start of the year. <laughs> and uh, Dan Fitzgerald team, they got off to a 111 of the first 12 and then lost six in a row and then have come on strong at the end of the year. But uh, Bernie Kent St. Mary's team, this is a talent-laden ball club. Maybe their maybe their best guys, Steve, are coming off the bench. I mean, you got A.J. Rollins coming off now, Johnson's coming off, people that can give them scoring. So St. Mary's will use 10 or 11 players, bench strength and scoring off the bench, pivotal for St. Mary's in terms of their success. St. Mary's has the very best defense in the last two weeks of the season. I mean, they've been holding opponents darn near 60 points per game. And Ernie Kent will change his defense a, a lot like the Mike Montgomery Stanford style. He'll play the, the tough man defense, but he'll throw little options in. Well, he likes to change up, give you different looks, and uh, his guys play hard. They, they will come at you very quick. Uh, Jamoki Horton now has lost some weight, a presence inside, an offensive threat, a big guy that you cannot get around easily. They key their offense with their defense, a well-coached St. Mary's team. And, of course, Dan Fitzgerald's done a great coaching job at Gonzaga for many, many years. They're the, one of the top three-point shooting teams in the league at 40% this year. And John Riley, you'll be able to pick him out. He shaves his head, and he is a young athlete who can hit the three-pointer. He had eight in last night's win where he scored a career-best 32 points. Yeah, eight's, eight's a lot. Eight is good. <laughs> if you can make eight, you will cause some problems for the opposition. So we're looking forward to seeing, really. And Dan Fitzgerald said before the game, we have to shoot it extremely well, take care of the ball. They did not beat St. Mary's in the, in the regular season. Uh, St. Mary's did defeat uh, Gonzaga twice. So, I mean, this is a club that's a tough matchup uh, for Gonzaga, and they're looking forward to the challenge. All right, let's go to Glenn Kuyper to find out what he's got going for halftime and also for the rest of this basketball game. Glenn? All right, thanks, Steve, and I agree with you guys. I think this game coming up, Gonzaga and St. Mary's, has a chance to be the best one of the tournament. I saw St. Mary's yesterday, and I think they may be the best team in, the, in this whole tournament right now. Best combination of inside and outside players, and as Dan said, they go 11, 12 deep. Watch out for St. Mary's the rest of the way. But coming up at halftime, we will speak with Michael Gillerin. We saw him earlier, and we'll hook up with the West Coast Conference Commissioner. We'll talk about what do you do if you're the commissioner of a conference who lacks respect. Try to get on the good side of the NCAA. That's what Gillerin has to do with the being the commissioner of the West Coast Conference. So we'll hook up with him at halftime. Steve, back to you. Thank you, Glenn. We continue the semifinals of the West Coast Conference with Gonzaga getting set to battle the St. Mary's Gales. Tonight's West Coast Conference men's semifinal game is brought to you by Power Bar Sports Energy Bars, fuel for optimum performance. Let's listen for tonight's starting lineups between the Gonzaga Bulldogs with a record of 19 and 8 and the St. Mary's Gales 18 and 9 from public address announcer Mike Gallagher. Dixon will come on for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Kyle is a 6'1 junior from Sisters, Oregon. And the point guard for the St. Mary's Gales, Cameron Sufi, who's led this team quite well. Also in the backcourt, John Rilly, we told you about his three-point shooting. He only had nine points in the two games against St. Mary's this year. And for the 
center for the Gonzaga Bulldogs at 6'11", 220 pounds, a sophomore from Australia, Paul Rogers. And the big man who has meant so much to St. Mary's in recent weeks, Jamoki Horton, 6'9", 290. He's a junior from Anchorage, Alaska, averaging 10 points per game, but averaging 14 in this 13-game stretch. John Kinlock will be one forward, 6'6", 203-pound junior from Bellingham, Washington, averaging close to 13 points per game. And Brent Ferris will go against him for St. Mary's, 6'7", 219, a senior from Napa, California, who's been a real scoring leader at 14 and a half. Jason Rubright is one of their top defensive forwards, real tough guy inside. And for St. Mary's, they will go with Josh Unruh, a 6'5", 186-pound sophomore from Salem, Oregon. Excellent three-point shooter. The coach for Gonzaga is Dan Fitzgerald. He's in his 13th year, has 216 wins to show for it. A San Francisco native. He coached in this area, Archbishop Mitty High School in San Jose, and Ernie Kent for St. Mary's in his fourth year. He was an assistant for Mike Montgomery at Stanford. Four-year starter at Oregon when he played in the Pac-10, then two years high school coaching in Eugene. Then on to Saudi Arabia to coordinate a club program for the Arabian American Oil Company. Ernie Ken, in four years, has done a nice job with St. Mary's, and this by far his best season ever, with 18 wins already against only nine losses, 10-4 and four in conference play, finishing the number three seed in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Teams in front of them, Santa Clara and the Portland Pilots. The Pilots are in the championship game, and now Portland awaiting. We're to find out who they will play. Will it be St. Mary's, the defensive strength in the last few weeks, or the offensive giant in the West Coast Conference, the Gonzaga Bulldogs? Rogers will jump center against Jamoki Horton, and it is controlled by Gonzaga. That's a typical start for Gonzaga as Umbro. I mean, for St. Mary's, Umbro just goes right out of bounds and bounces over. Kyle Dixon with a high floater that comes home. And Kyle Dixon averaging 13 points per game this year. 6'1 junior from Sisters, Oregon. Cameron Sufi has been their point guard. He'll play a lot of minutes. And it's his ability to get this team in their half court game. Here's Brent Forrest taking it to the hoop and missing. Ferris is very clever. Low post player and also 15 feet on and here's John Riley for three. Oh, yeah. sideline watching the other team play like they're watching that Portland Royal Marymount game. What happens to you as a young athlete? I think what happens to you is you get motivated to come out and try to, try to get to the finals and then you're anxious to get out on the floor. Both these teams playing with terrific emotion so far in the first couple of minutes. Well, Dan Fitzgerald is one of the most animated coaches in America and his team is full of the same amount of energy. <laughs> So I'm not sure who the tomorrow will go against. It goes against Jamoki Horton. Watch the right side of the screen. Well, when the screens have to be set, look like uh, Jamoki stepped in there and he said, you know, I didn't do much. I just moved my shoulder. But when Jamoki moves his shoulder, <laughs> you're in trouble when you run into it. Right, having to 
save it. Finally is controlled by Kyle Dixon. And he takes it right at Kyle. It's a very good beat. Comes into the loose basketball. I had to give him all. He has to give it up here. Oh, take it off. Oh, he has to play this game. Didn't make a good decision that time going to the goal. And Hershey usually does make good decisions. He's only averaging three and a half points per game. But he'll give you great defense and also will not turn the ball over many times. Well, you can see the Gales early here with a little decisive quickness advantage of the Jack. They will pressure severely at the defensive end, trying to cause some turnovers. Sufi and Ryan can execute a point guard position. And a foul of the goal against Kyle Dixon. Both teams really will play a sticky man to man defense. And we're seeing a lot of enthusiasm to start this game. I mean, they came out of the gate ready to score, and Ernie Kent. He's done such an excellent job leading the team in the last 13 games. And during that streak, it has been deepened. They're allowing their opponents just 63 points per game in the last 13 contests. Baltimore gets it after Sufi. They'll have to come out on Sufi because he can't hit the three-pointer. hit three last night. That was a career best in their win over the U.S. where they absolutely Steve, he's moving bodies inside. He wants the ball. Brent Powell is through the hoop. He's got a very good hand. As a southpaw, he'll go to his left as strong as anyone you'll see in this league. They're so concerned about the ball inside. Two people are going to get that ball. They're 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 going to get that ball. His knee. Actually, St. Mary's uh, in that situation, I mean, that's a time Sufi has to be under control. But the most important guy on the floor is the man with the ball. And uh, Gonzaga did not stop him. Sufi uh, committed the turnover, but the Bulldogs got the bullet at that point. Kevin Williams is the game that started the second game of last year. The big man. He's been able to make the play this year. They could provide play for the new point guard, Kyle Dixon. Dixon on the side. Side strength, Chris Johnson comes in the game. Now in for Gonzaga and Bulldogs, Scott Snyder. And out goes Paul Rogers. John Kinlock drops the first free throw. Gonzaga, a very good foul shooting team, the third best in the league at 69%. Kinlock has a vote, and it is 76. St. Mary. These are the two guys here with A.J. Rollins and, and Chris Johnson that, that I think are the most talented players on the St. Mary's team. And, I mean, they're excellent offensive threats. And A.J. was, was hurt earlier, and uh, Ernie Kent did not want to disrupt the chemistry he had uh, when he started winning after Rollins got hurt. So he's bringing them off the bench and been very successful. And uh, Chris Johnson and A.J. Rollins have adapted well, which, which says a lot for the program because he, these are two guys that are used to starting and getting their points, but they're happy because their team has been very successful. And they're getting things out of the Sufi makes the play that reaches down on his tennis shoe and kind of rubs his hand. 
in so that he feels he's got a little more stick of a more secure the next time he gets the basketball. John Roomba, Australia is his second three-pointer in this game. Not that crazy about his haircut, but he can shoot. Dan Fitzgerald will take time out with 15.06 to play here in the first half. It's Gonzaga down to St. Mary's by one, 10 to 9. Ten to nine, Gonzaga has a one-point lead with 15.06. And here's what Dan Bowman was talking about. Watch Sufi after the shot, Danny. Yeah, like all shooters, he has idiosyncrasies, and one of them is, look, look, he reaches down and grabs his tennis shoe, and I don't know if he's got some stick him down there, or if it's just a habit here. Here's a guy, really, that has unlimited range. I mean, you cannot guard him close enough when he crosses half court. He has made two bombs already in the first half. He's a tough guy, too. Back in Australia, he played Australian rules football. And I know on Sportstown, you have probably seen a little bit of that sport. And he is wild, and he is mean. And here comes Gonzaga the other way. They're looking up for Willie. It's time to go to Sufi. And, it and here comes St. Mary's the other way. Sufi in the middle of the attack. Gilmore. Side, relentless around the glass, and Gilmore, a competitive guy, makes a nice play. Well, look at the way St. Mary's fast breaks the ball after the score. You have to retreat and quickly get back there, retrace your steps if you're playing against the Gales, because not only will they fast break after a miss, uh, they will get it down quickly after you score. Wherever Johnson goes to St. Mary's, the defense strikes us out of his way. He's an excellent three point shooter. They got a little faster. He will be at the line for two shots. Well, this is the penetration by Herschel Gilmore inside. Gets one block, but look at him just stay after it. Get aggressive in there. Force it up and try and make a hoping to get the foul, but they made a terrific shot off the window. And a nice uh, individual effort that time by Herschel Gilmore. You should have seen that shoot around practice today. Noise, energy, life. It was nonsense. Nope. Very well organized. And he came with a very thorough breakdown of his opponent. Knew exactly what they had to do to be successful. Back in the game. Well, he really has a nice size advantage against Sufi. So they're trying to free really up behind a double screen. And he can stop and just create his own shot. Harris again, one player on the screen, turning, shooting, scoring. Eric Barris averaging 14 and 8 there. Six, five, six, four and a half. He's got five points already early in the ball game. And he's a guy that can post up, turn and score. He will get to the ball. He had like 19 points in one game earlier this year against Santa Barbara. He would right down low and be his man, AJ Rollins. Nice pass by Snyder. High to low. Tough matchup for Gonzaga. Prince Bear is really clever on that low block. Well, if you're Gonzaga, you have to make some adjustments. If Bear starts to burn you, have to go around low, maybe try to front him, uh, play up on the side, push him out from the low block. AJ Rollins comes out. Jamoki Horton back in. Josh Unger will inbound and almost throws it away. That was last touch by Brent Ferris. Thought that Brent Ferris was waiting for the ball to come to him. Well, Ferris catches Don't that pass and just turns it in for the layup. I mean, the, 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 the pass was just it was well executed, but he just couldn't get Ferris the ball. Three, yes. Oh, 
position by Bruin, who just held it there. And look at the way Gonzaga attacks the goal. I mean, this guy, this kid Rogers, is very, very active for a seven foot. And there's the goal position by really right the other end of the He said, forget it, it's coming off. This, game, this game's too intense. He had never lasted very long with Ernie as Josh Andros picked up his second foul. AJ Rollins was coming to the game to replace him. St. Mary's lead by three. We're at the 12 minute mark of this first half. Thanks, Steve. Very special guest, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Steve Nash. And Steve, first of all, congratulations, but I imagine it's a little tough to think about an award like that after a disappointing loss yesterday. Definitely. Uh, personal accolades really are very secondary uh, when it comes to uh, the overall pitcher and the team goals. And You know, obviously we had a great season. Unfortunately, our worst two games came at the end of the year. It's poor timing. I know I don't think this team's done. I think we really took a step back. We were ready to take three or four more steps forward. And, it's unfortunate the way it turned out with the timing and everything. And you said, you know, it, it was you guys' fault. You did not play well. We talked about Loyola. Yeah, they played well, but you guys play well. You win the game. Yeah, it is. It's our fault. Uh, mentally, we weren't prepared. You know, we didn't come out as, as well as we should have. And I think that, you know, we can only blame ourselves. At the same time, I think that, you know, if we get things together, we still can play some more basketball this year, NIT, NCA, whatever it may be. But hopefully we'll get a chance to play again. On a personal level, how difficult is it to put this NBA talk, which you're starting your here now, it's your junior year, is it difficult to put that behind you and concentrate on your teammates and your own team? Well, obviously I think about that because it is the main focus of my life, but at the same time, you know, I, I love my teammates and I, you know, I hope the best for uh, our whole team as a whole, so, you know, it's, it's not that hard to put it behind me, even though I will eventually uh, think about that. All right, Steve, thanks for being with us. Thank Good you. luck. Okay. Steve Nash. Fizz. Santa Clara is really going to be good next year. Nash is coming back. All five starters coming back. They had only one senior. There is a field goal story to start this game. Both teams shooting extremely well. The only man they're going to lose is Claude Jones. And I talked with two NBA scouts before tonight's ball game. They like Nash's style quite a bit. They think he needs to get stronger. And also defensive end of the floor, but his overall game, his shooting ability is quite good, and there's a couple of teams who will be coming to the NBA next year. That's exactly what they said about John Stockton. That's exactly what they said about John Stockton. He said, he said well, he's going to get a little bit stronger. We don't know if he can play on this level. The rest is history. But he's from British Columbia, so both the Vancouver Grizzlies and Toronto Raptors are interesting. They'd love to have a player from their country. Here's Cameron Supley going with Brent Ferris and Jamoki Hort, Chris Johnson, and also coming to the game for St. Mary's, Marshall Marshall, uh, I'm sorry, Marshall Gilman. Where's Jamoki Hort? You know, I, I think he's a guy that has to make his presence felt, Steve, ball for the ball. And uh, again, he really has not touched the ball. The whole ball's got a good defensive ball. Supley has a knock away. Two-point lead for Gonzaga. Kyle Dixon runs the offense. Really long distance. He's got a foul shot. That is now 218 three-pointers in his career, fifth best in West Coast Conference history. Wow, he's such a quick shot. He doesn't even look at the goal. He was looking down on the floor. So you think when you're defending him, he's not looking to shoot the ball. This is Jamaica Horton rebound. Restart their offense. They have to swing it over to Jamoki. Well, 
Chris Johnson is another guy. There's always a place in college basketball for, for a Herschel Gilmore, a guy that will work hard at the defensive end, get on the ground, make things happen. The coaches love those guys. He played his high school basketball here at Hayward at, at Mount Eden High School. And uh, he, he's an exciting young guy. He's done a good job uh, so far in the first half. Point lead on Gonzaga here in the first half. Reno Air, the preferred airline of the West Coast Conference Tournament, winning the West over. And Steve Fiziak and Dan Belwamini back at Toso Pavilion. There's a three point shooting, four for six, three for four is St. Mary's. And John really has hit all three three pointers for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Sufi and Yvonne Dodic in the game now. And, and Ivan Dodic, really a very solid player, very smart. There was a three second violation on Jamoki Horton, but you'll like him. He's a guy who will turn down almost every single shot. I will. Make sure <laughs> the team gets into their offense. No, I like guys that shoot the ball, Steve. <laughs> Personally, I, I love shooters. <laughs> Kyle Dixon gets oh. the second field. A.J. Ryan beats the defense down the floor. Well, we've seen that happen before. I mean, St. Mary's does an excellent job of getting it out of the net and initiating a fast break. And when you score, get back quick. John Willie really setting a screen. Rude Wright comes up with second basketball. 6.40 to play here in the first half. And St. Mary's Gales lead by six points. Really? Are you kidding me with this guy, really? Come on. I said you like Dodic. I think you like Dodic. No, I like really a lot better. <laughs> Give me a really every time. Jamoki Horton will be at the foul line for two shots. You really like really. Oh, boy. Number one draft pick right there. <laughs> he's clapping his hands. What he's saying is, look, I'm hot. Give me the ball. That's a third foul on Jason Rubright. And he is one of the most underrated players, a guy they really like to have out of the floor. But now he will not be playing the last 618 of this first half. Rubright comes out. And coming in for him is Scott Snyder, a 6'9 junior from Federal Way, Washington. He's down on the low block left side. Thank you. 
Duke's got a good player for Langdon. Tra yeah, a guy by the name of Trajan Langdon, who uh, went to Duke, also from Anchorage. Pretty fair cool country basketball. Yeah, Trajan was a freshman. Shimoki was a player of the year in the state. Here comes Cameron Sufi down the corner. Josh Unro back in the game. He's playing with two fouls. Chris Johnson looking for the three instead of one. Miss it. This gets it. It's a nice up fake, though, by Johnson because you know, he's made a couple of threes. So you're going to run at him. He knew that. Mattered himself because uh, he really had an easy shot, just couldn't put it away. So Ernie needs to watch his team settle back in. He's with a three point lead. Opportunities inside. Well, Mackley Joseph now in the game wearing number five. He came in for Gilmore. St. Mary's and Gonzaga trying to find out who will be the other representative in the West Coast Conference to play Portland in the men's championship game tomorrow night. Right here at Tosa Pavilion. Still available. So come on down. This is always great. Exciting action. That's a sensational finish in this league championship. Remember a couple of years back when Steve Nash put on that show at USF hitting like eight or ten three-pointers. I do remember that, Steve. You were there. That's right. There's John Ritter. He's at four three points so far in this game. Well, Ron is trying to take hold. He does, but misses short. Chris Johnson rebounds. Great lead pass to Andrew. This terrific pass by Unruh and Rollins with the left hand just could not get the roll. I mean, how, how did he find? I'm not sure he was passing it. Unruh Rollins streaking down the floor.
takes it inside. Now has 14 of his team's 30 points. He's got an excellent outside touch. And pretty new to the hoop. That was so smart about Willie. Not only did he, did he make the score, but he stepped in the passing lane to stop St. Mary's from fast breaking after the score. I thought that was a real intense, smart play by really just to stop that fast break after he put the put the goal in. Meckley Joseph taking that three, it doesn't go. And rebounding is Gonzaga's Jeff Kinlock. See if they can find really on the wing now. You gotta look for him with the penetration. Let's go over to Glenn Kuyper. All right, thanks, Steve. And joining me now here on the sidelines, former University of Oregon coach Don Munson. Don, you're probably not watching the game quite as close as everybody else. You got your eye on the Gonzaga bench over there. His son, Dan, is the assistant coach. Did you talk him into being an assistant coach or did you try to talk him out of it? Uh, I think I tried to talk him out of it. You know, kids don't listen to their dads. No, uh, he's done a good job. I'm proud of him. And uh, I, I know the concerns he goes through. and. So hopefully why uh, he'll have enjoyment out of it. Does he come to you for advice once in a while? A, a young coach talking to a guy who's been in the business for a while? Hey, you know those kids, they, got, they know all the <laughs> Do answers. Do it on their own, oh, right? Yeah, they, they come to you for other things, not coaching advice. Oh, uh, we talk a lot of basketball. We're close. Uh, Probably do more things on a golf course together than, than basketball. That's not so bad either. No, it's good. So you've been out of coaching for a couple years. You miss it? I miss the competition. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't miss, but the competition uh, you miss. So one of these days, uh, maybe you'll, the competition will get out of your blood too. I don't know. Right, thanks, Don. Thank Go you. enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Fizz? Thanks, Glenn. And there's the son, Dan Monson. And Dan doing a very, very good job working with Dan Fitzgerald, and he's been very responsible for the recruits that they have picked up, enabling this basketball game to go from a NIT team a year ago losing four starters to back looking for their 20th win once again this year. Tom Munson did a great job at Oregon, and prior to that was at the University of Idaho. Nice to see it in the family. You know, that's, that's a real special thing to have your son in coaching, and you spent so many years in the business yourself. But not Dan Bill your son wants to be a lawyer. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, each to their own. <laughs> you were successful in talking about it. There's Paul Rogers giving up to Kinlock. Kinlock misses a three. Rebounding inside Gonzaga. St. Mary's in front by two points with two minutes to go. Look at the inability of St. Mary's to score inside. Steve has hurt them. Tomoki Horton has not had the kind of first half that Ernie Kent had hoped for. He's not in the game right now. So a guy like Rollins has to post up and try to receive the ball and see if he can do something with his back. <laughs> this 
what I was talking about as Jason Bond has to be called on to defend Brent Ferris. Ferris will be at the free throw line all night long if just one player covers him. He's just so clever down in that low post. Doesn't he play well without the ball, though? He flashes at the low post, calls for the ball. So important to beat people to the spot if you're playing defense. Uh, you could not trail coming across the post because if you do, you will be going. There's an active foul, and you have to have good spacing defensively when you're on it. There's now three or four from the foul line. Get in his club a four point lead with 140 to go here in the first half. Dixon and Ray in the backcourt. Jason Bond with the Washington transfer from several years back. Second foul on Paul Rogers. I'm sure uh, Dan Cheryl is that excited for the call. Sufi looks over and again gets the offensive call. Shot clock down. And Gonzaga will float into their zone defense, matching up out high. Farris gets it. Wasn't that a beautiful pass by Ferris? Ferris against the zone. It's nice to get the ball in the middle of the floor and go ahead and create, force the defense to react. And A.J. Rollins, a finisher, he can hit the ball near the goal. He can do damage. Both of these teams really hard. First half it well as Ernie Kent, St. Mary's Gals have a three-point lead over the Gonzaga Bulldogs, 37-34 at halftime in the final game of our Sports Channel West Coast Conference triple header. We'll be right back. Welcome back to halftime, the Power Bar West Coast Conference semifinals. Game two, St. Mary's with a 37. 34 lead over Gonzaga. Now the winner of this game, of course, will head into tomorrow's WCC championship, and they will be taking on the University of Portland Pilots, a 74-68 winner over Loyola Marymount in our first semifinal game, and that will be tomorrow night, the West Coast Conference Championship. Portland already in, and of course it will either be St. Mary's or Gonzaga. Now when halftime continues, we will hook up with the West Coast Conference Commissioner, Michael Gillerin. We'll find out what does the West Coast Conference have to do to get a little respect. We'll have that more in just a moment. After 20 minutes of basketball in our second semifinal, the St. Mary's Gales lead the Gonzaga Bulldogs 37-34. Those two teams trying to hook up in tomorrow's WCC Championship against Portland. Joining me now, the West Coast Conference Commissioner, Michael Giller. And Michael, we spoke a little bit earlier with Dick Davey, but thing that's going around is WCC, how does it get respect? Do they deserve two teams in the ladies' tournament? Do they deserve two teams in the men's tournament? What do you do as the commissioner to try to prop up your conference a little bit? Well, there's really only so much uh, that can be done by uh, lobbying or the powers of persuasion or whatever you want to call them. The reality is that the selection process is a uh, thorough review by, uh, I think, good intention men and women. Now, last year we had two women's teams in the tournament and we just missed a third. This year, uh, I think Portland is a strong candidate for an at-large uh, team, but uh, there are uh, 31 other commissioners around the country saying the same thing about their runner-up. So uh, it's, a, it's always a tough decision to make. We've, uh, 
We've been treated fairly over the years by the NCAA and by the NIT. And uh, in our other sports, uh, again, we, we have no complaints. Uh, the reality is you earn the respect on the playing field, on the court, uh, wherever, and, uh, and then you hope that, it, that it's recognized. But we, we don't really worry. You can't really worry much about that. You have to go and do your job and, and let the chips fall where they may. Is it difficult sometimes the fact that you really have to sidestep the Pac-10 because your entire conference where your teams and cities are are really surrounded by the Pac-10? Yes, but we're an entirely different uh, entity. That, that, that's a whole different animal, if you will. So we, you don't even try to fight them? Why should we? we, we it's apples and oranges. Uh, big is good, little is good. Whatever, you know, uh, we're friendly competitors. We respect them. They respect us. Uh, uh, you know, th they're good people. Um, the fact is that we are who we are. We, we, we try to promote the, the ideal of the student athlete and mean it. We try to graduate our kids. We, we would love it if everybody on our teams ended up with an NBA career, I suppose, uh, but that's not the real world. And uh, uh, we're very pleased with our graduation rates. We're very pleased with our commitment to gender equity. And uh, what the Pac-10 does, uh, God bless them. We wish them all the best, but it's, it's really of little consequence to us what they do. What does the future hold for the West Coast Conference? Anything up and coming that, um, yeah, you might make a splash in the NCAA? Well, yeah, I never, I'm, I'm probably the worst person in the world to ask about that. Uh, we've had national championships in uh, baseball and soccer, and, uh, men's volleyball, a and I never know from one year to the next how a team's going to do. Last year, for example, Pepperdine was given no chance against Michigan, took them to overtime, had the ball with a chance to win. Year before, Santa Clara had a number 15 team, had uh, number 15 seed, beat a number two seed, Arizona. I've given up predicting, uh, you know, either of these teams, for example, could go on and do well in the NCAA, as could the first uh, uh, winner in Portland, the first semifinal. I, I uh, fortunately do not get paid for predictions. Mike, thanks for being with us, and another great tournament here at Santa Clara. Thank you very much. Michael Gillerin, the West Coast Conference Commissioner, has been our guest here at halftime. We got 20 more minutes of basketball. It's St. Mary's leading 37-34. Halftime of game two, Power Bar West Coast Conference semifinals. The St. Mary's Gale, 37, Gonzaga Bulldogs, 34. St. Mary's trying to sneak into that West Coast Conference championship game against Portland. Earlier today, the USF Lady Dons, a very big afternoon for them. They were the number one seed in the tournament, and they showed why. Junior center Valerie Gion, the MVP of the tournament, led USF to a 66-50 victory over Portland and they will head to the NCAA Women's Tournament for the first time for USF. A very big day for the Lady Dons. Now, a little later on in game one of the men's semifinals, it was the University of Portland Pilots taking on a feisty number eight seed Loyola Marymount. Marymount hung tough. But in the end, it was a little bit too much Hanan Chapman, the big man inside for Portland. It was the final 74-68 Chapman. Nice little inside shot from Portland. The winners over LMU, and they will head into tomorrow's West Coast Conference Championship. They will play the winner of this game, St. Mary's leading 37-34. We'll be back with second half action in just a moment. Welcome back to Toso Pavilion on the campus of Santa Clara University where the Bulldogs only trail by three points. They've been outboarded. Their bench for uh, 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 St. Mary's has outscored them dramatically, but one big difference, John really has been hot. Yeah, really? Really. Yes, he has. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, when you can when you can shoot the bombs, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, but I think St. Mary's, if you come out the second half, they did a nice job defensively. They forced turnovers. They did some good things. But uh, they're going to have to extend that defense a bit. Well, they are the very best three-point shooting team in the West Coast Conference this year at 40%. And John really has been the big difference. I mean, in his career, he's shooting like 44% from three-point range, way out. Yeah, way out. And, and look at the pressure. It's not like guys were not flying to him. I mean, they were right up in his face, but it didn't really make any difference. I mean, that's why Gonzaga is where they are. Six out of nine from the three-point range and really has five of the six. So... 
pretty good job by Dan Fitzgerald's club uh, shooting that perimeter shot. But St. Mary's really dominated the glass. Uh, they had a big edge in terms of rebounding, especially at the offensive end. They were able to get second and third shots. And uh, Jamoki Horton gets that one in uh, for the Gales. Now, that was Jamoki's only basket of the half. He will have to get involved a little bit more in the second half. But look at what St. Mary's was able to do in terms of rebounding the first half. Eight to one on the offensive boards. John really comes back out. He hit five of six from three-point range, has a team high, a game high, 17 points. And again, he's been sizzling in this tournament, had 32 in the opening quarterfinal game. A victory they had just last night. So he is one of the leading candidates for most valuable player in the West Coast Conference this year in the postseason tournament. In our last game, Portland was able to survive as they knocked off Loyola Marymount. And Gonzaga with a three to tie the game. And a man. By St. Mary's to start the second half. So you know they're going to try to free Willie up behind the line, and Gilmore's going to take the challenge. Chris Johnson will start the second half. That ball is tipped in. Was it an offensive goal? Can you believe it was by Rubright? And or Phil Rogers. It was either Rubright or Rogers. I thought a good call because uh, Rogers touched the ball when it was on the cylinder. So take away the basket. They had cut the lead to one point with the bucket. Instead, St. Mary's still has it with a three-point edge. Opening 30 seconds of this second half. Cameron Sufi, Gilmore, Jamoki Horton, Chris Johnson, and Brett Ferris. And Sufi grabbed the basketball and was able to escape by John really knocking it out of bounds. John really grew up in Australia playing cricket and Australian rules football. When he found basketball, he absolutely fell in love with it, came to the States to continue his career. John made a good decision. Get, get away from that Australian rules football game. Wow. Oh, so yeah. Is that the no pads game? That's when you go out there and just kill yourself and dive all over the field. You, know, Tom, you do those, don't you? Steve does everything. I'm, I'm past the angry young man stage. <laughs> There's Vince. He is constant tension. It's amazing to watch Dan Fitzgerald and in the 1990 stress is such a big word in the coaching world. Dan Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald has never been affected by it. You know, you know why he has lasted so long? Because he's a guy that adapts to change. I mean, Dan Fitzgerald's team is a three-point shooting team. I mean, you wouldn't say that about his club 10 or 11 years ago that they would rely on perimeter scoring. Chris Johnson for three. Ernie Cam pointed right at Chris. Way to spot up. Way to know where your that basketball is going to move to. Johnson's taking the challenge now, Steve. He's gone on to really and trying to play really hard when he doesn't have the ball. Keep the ball out of his hands. Now Sufi has to take him. Really looking for an opening and his time. And Cameron Sufi will be called for the personal foul. And that is Cameron Sufi's first personal foul on the game. Yeah. Ernie Kent sending in the defensive assignment, but Gonzaga breaks it down with a great entry pass to Jeff Kinlock, and he closes the lead to four. Dave Mary just wasn't mentally alert, Steve, on that, on that out of bounds. Ernie Kent was trying to get some instruction. Guys turned their head, and uh, Gonzaga just made a quick out of bounds. Very effective. Out of and he is fouled. And there's Rubrecht, and that's his fourth. Jason Rubrecht, one of their toughest defenders, picks up his fourth personal foul. Well, Rubrecht trying to get around Jamoki Horton, which is not easy. There was some contact, and now Ron Lavitich had the call. Rubrecht turned around and said something to, to the official. I thought Lavitich made a good move. He just uh, looked at him and uh, turned his back and walked away because that's not a situation you want to give a technical to the young man. Side of the big guy. They did so very, very successfully. And here, the second half, you said they had to go inside the hole. It seems like Ernie Kent believing you, but Horton has it stripped, and here comes Gonzaga the other way. A steal there by Sufi. And we put Brock Hopper back outside. A nice decision by Sufi to back it up. Gilmore missing the three. And the foul will be called on Jamoki Horton. Jamoki Horton gets the personal foul. The big 6 9 
contact inside. We'll, we'll get a good look at it as Jamoki Horton is trying to compete for this rebound. And there was a definite bump inside by really. And uh, Jamoki saying, look, it looked like I was hit. Third foul. Here's John Willie. Boy, he just wears you out. It's hard to get around him. I mean, he's a big man inside, and you can't help but bump and, and, and hit Jamoki when you're defending him. But the, all that is contact. Now they're going to put Jamoki uh, on the bench. I think he picked up his uh, his uh, third foul on uh, the, uh, the last sequence. You know what? I used to play for the uh, when I broadcast for the Cincinnati Bengals. I would play with the coaches, the Sam Weiss and his staff, against the team. And it was my job to defend Anthony Munoz. Who goes 6'7, 290 pounds, and there's a certain zone you just did not enter. And I think Jamoki Horton has a similar zone. Well, that must have been fun, Steve, playing basketball against, uh, against big football players. One thing I never wanted to do was play basketball against football players because they don't, they don't understand the game of basketball. situation Ferris come to your stop and go ahead and look to shoot it from three or four feet st. Mary's with a precarious one-point lead with 15 and a half minutes remaining in this basketball game Brent Ferris just picked up a charging foul and for Brent Ferris it was just his first foul in the game the team's third here in this half All right, let's run our favorite play this time down the floor, Steve. Guess what it is? Screen for really. Either a screen, here he comes around a double. And smashing his way to the hoop for the Gonzaga Bulldogs with Scott Snyder. No foul was called. It will still be Gonzaga's basketball. You're right, they're trying to send a double, but uh, St. Mary's just fought their way through it. Yeah, here, here's the double screen. They're, they're trying to run him around, but... Really, the ball did not go in his direction in, in that particular uh, situation. Uh, Chris Johnson doing a good defensive job, if you can believe that, on a guy that's made six or seven uh, three-point shots. But jo Johnson's right up on him. I mean, really, he's had to earn every goal that he's had in this game. And if you're St. Mary's, the theory is, let's force really to put it on the ground and take it toward the hoop, not give him anything on the outside. St. Mary's gets it. The defense. Gonzaga tries to finish, but Snyder cannot. He was off balance. So down the floor comes St. Mary's. Josh Unger with the basketball. Being defended by Dixon. And Dixon, a little bit too aggressive with the defense, picks up the personal foul. And that will be their fourth team foul of the half. The second foul on Kyle Dixon. We talked about St. Mary's hot ending to the year. How about Gonzaga? They won seven of the last eight. The only loss was a three-point loss to Portland. And they outscored the opposition by 18 points per game. Real test tonight from the St. Mary's Gales. 
who have been equally hot on the stretch. Paris missing that 10 foot. Well, Gonzaga has turned the D up in the second half, playing much better defense in the half court in the second half than they did in the first. I mean, they are taking the challenge. Look, now they got two guys on the And Kinlock misses the three. Well, if you're defending Gonzaga, it's not a bad idea to put two people on. I mean, they, 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 as hot as really is in this game, force someone else to beat you. If you have to keep a couple of people close to him uh, high, let's see if someone else can knock down a three before we just uh, go head up uh, on John Rook. They got a little AJ Rock. He forces up and will not fall. Well, that rattle around and hit every part of the iron. Finally bounced out. But AJ will be at the free throw line for two shots where he is at 64% bounce shooter this year. Paul Rogers picks up his fourth foul. So Rogers has four. Rude Wright has four. And the two big people who play so many minutes are in foul difficulty. But did they count up three fouls? Excuse me. I saw A.J. Rollins play in an all-star game in high school, and, and I really liked him. He, he was a guy that uh, St. Mary signed early and after they signed him early, he's building. He's Sioux City is where he's from. He played at. Uh, we'll get that example for you. Steve has that down. Rio High School in Fairfield, I think. And uh, when I saw him play in high school, Steve, they signed him early, and he was a guy that. Everybody wanted when the season was in its conclusion. He was one of those guys where they signed him, and uh, St. Mary's was really happy they got him. And then by the end of the year, everybody was kind of wondering why they didn't recruit him. So it was a real coup for Ernie Kent. Uh, and we'll have a back next year. Judy, very young move this year. I mean, all of the top teams are just loaded with other classmen. There's Johnson on high. Josh Hunter has been very quiet. He's a very good three-point shooter. A.J. Rollins had position on his defender. And we're right to the hoop. And here's St. Mary's a three-point lead with 13-20 left. And St. Mary's attacking inside. Well executed by the Gales. Chris Johnson and uh, A.J. Rollins, uh, two of their real top offensive threats. They don't start, but they play the majority of the minutes. Kyle Dixon backs away from Josh Hunter. Rogers being defended by A.J. Rollins. Rogers takes it and scores. It's a one-point ball game again, 44-43. Inside 13 minutes left in this semifinal game here at Toso Pavilion. Brent Ferris has it knocked away by Paul Rogers. That's the second time Rogers has blocked his shot. That ball is knocked out of bounds and hits our monitor and also our stage manager, the lovely Janice. Janice had good hands that time. She put it up and deflected the ball. She did, she did a nice job of defending she, us. She <laughs> made sure it hit the monitor. <laughs> That's right. It's her job. But now checking into the game for Gonzaga is Kevin Williams, a 6'1 player from Foster City, California. Two on really again. Kevin Williams looking to spot up. Again, you have Gilmore now and John Willie is at six three pointers. So every single defender is where, where he will be. Trying to run them off screens to free him up, and St. Mary's just jump switching at him at every opportunity. Really backing up. Oh, look at that shot. Great defense by Ferris and Willie. Still got it in. He's got 20 points. 22, excuse me. 45-44, Gonzaga has their first lead since the first half. Chris Johnson, oh, two great shots. First by Gonzaga's John Willey, and now by Chris Johnson. 11 points for CJ. CJ has to score one out of the floor, and he has to come back, Steve, and guard Willey. He's, he's getting no rest. John Sorny, he can put it on the ground. What? Come on! Scott Snyder! Now, really, we'll say that's a pass. I had to do that. It was not a pass. It was the alley oop. 47 46. The Bulldogs have the lead, and the Gales of St. Mary's have dropped the load of Horton. Horton is fouled. Big number 
pretty boy Scott Snyder, a junior from Federal Way, Washington, out of Pacific Lutheran College. He averages five and a half points per game, and there's the third foul for Scott Snyder. Yeah, but very, very tough inside, trying to try to get around Jamoki Horton. The pass was from Ferris at the point. When you initiate from the point, it's very difficult to get any help at all. And a good job that time uh, by St. Mary's to get it inside. The man from Toowoomba, Australia, checks out of the game. He is six of seven from three point range, but since that six of seven, Tony Kenna said, defense, everybody, watch him. He's been doubling him. The defense has been rolling over to his side to make sure he never gets an entry. Jamoki Hort, meantime, misses with the foul shots, and that ball is knocked out of bounds, and it belongs to Gonzaga. 11 minutes to play in this basketball game, and it has been a tight one from the very get-go. Ernie Kent's Gales are down by one. Let's now go to Glenn Kuyper. All right, thanks, Stephen. Joining me now, Dr. Michael Dillingham, the team doctor for the San Francisco 49ers, but also for Santa Clara University, and you got your start here at Santa Clara. This is where I got started about 15 years ago or so. The trainer here, Mike Semlin, brought a few kids around. And we started a sports medicine clinic up at Stanford, and the whole thing took off from there. And this is really the start, and the Niners came later. And I got to tell you, I love this place and the administration, the attitude in this school, the quality and the attitude of the kids. It's a great program. Well, you deal with a lot of professional athletes and also some college athletes. What's the difference? Not physically, but mentally. Maybe when they're rehabbing or something like that. Well, the, one of the big differences is resource, and the other is the length of a season, particularly in football. College is 10, 12 weeks, and the pros are six months long, at least the way the Niners have been doing it lately so it's a whole different thing to keep people going something that would end a college season only take a guy out half a season in the pros it's a big difference but doctor you got any remedies for tired broadcasters tonight i think a little sun in the south of mexico i think you should do that right after <laughs> Could the be a lot worse yeah, thanks a lot doctor. okay bye dr Thank michael you. dillingham the team doctor for not only the san francisco 49ers but santa clara university as well steve Thank you very much, Thanks. Michael, for that plug. And Dan and I are off for Acapulco as soon as this ball game ends. And we'll send our receipts to Sports Channel. And, uh, right. You know, I like, the, and I like, the, I like the doctor. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to him for a prescription <laughs> after this, this is over. A little R&R, &R, but not tonight in the final 11 minutes of this game. It has been nothing but emotion and energy from the very get-go. Rogers gets it low and scores. And Gonzaga has played a brilliant last three minutes to come from five down. Take the lead by three at 49-46. Well, the Bulldogs have played a fine second half. I mean, they're playing without the ball. Guys are cutting to the goal. And there again, from high to low, very effective. Got it done well. Big body in there. Pretty good. Gonzaga lead now to run at 49-48. That's six points now for Horton. Steve, watch the motion that Gonzaga employs position of offense playing without the ball. Watch people move and cut. If they don't get it, they will back cut, back screens, trying to free someone up. Oh. A foul will be called against St. Mary's. We're talking about this being a little like Santa Clara style. With, you know, a lot of teams run the motion, but do they run the motion with the same kind of screens? I mean, physical screens like a Santa Clara, like a Gonzaga. It's execution is, it, is uh, exactly what you're referring to. And, uh, Santa Clara does a nice job of it. Dan Fitzgerald's team is, is doing a magnificent job in the second half of turning their offense up, trying to screen without the ball, set screens, be effective, and run your offense. Again, really coming off the screen, this is a perfect out-of-bounds play when you're playing man-to-man. -man. Get your best shooter right in the middle of the floor. Set a few screens for him. Roll him off the screen. Really right in the center of your screen. Set a screen and then cut right off and try to find the open shot. So good execution by Gonzaga. They get a terrific free throw shooter to the line. 87% on the year. This would be something if you had Portland and Gonzaga. See his scoring average this year, 13.6. How did he do that? Well, he was saving it for, for the end. See, I, what John said was, I'm going to do it about 13, 14 a game until I get to the West Coast Conference tournament. He goes for 32 last night, and he has 23 so far tonight. He's averaging 13 and a half points per game. 51 48 is our score. And the reason St. Mary Steve goes to the zone, remember the last.
first two times down it was high to low for the Gales, and they scored. Gonzaga switches the defense, and it works. They tried to compact it inside for some outside shooting. So again, good strategy by Gonzaga to give uh, St. Mary's a different look. David Cole now in the game. Gonzaga points on Kyle Dixon to the right side. Snyder grabs a miss. Well, those are the shots you have to make because really ended up with three people on it. So Dixon's all alone, and that's a shot that, that has to go down uh, for the Bulldogs here in the second half if they're going to win this game. Cameron Sufi guarding uh, really now. He's got a nice size advantage on him. Dixon's a tough guy. Took it inside again. Playing without the ball. Running the screen, going on the baseline, trying to rub his man off the screen and establish position inside. Here comes Dixon. Playing a little bit too tight defensively, St. Mary's inside, and Dixon just rubs him right off the screen as Unruh picks up the foul. It's his fourth personal foul. Unruh has, when you're playing defense and the ball all of a sudden is reversed, you better back off your man to get a little bit of spacing so you can beat him across the key. He's one of the best three-point shooters on the team now. He's on the sideline. Kyle Dixon. He makes the first foul shot, and Dan Fitzgerald's. Bulldogs beginning to pull away. This four-point advantage is their biggest lead of the game. Dixon makes his second. The lead is five. Dixon has ten points. Gail Steve had 11 points in 11 minutes. They <laughs> just have not been able to get it done at the offensive end of the floor. We're tied at 37 of the break. They go inside Ferris for the lane. Well, that was the Ferris of the first half. I mean, he, he did open up and made himself available. He's got 11. executed in the half court. Not much transition in the second half. Again, here's that motion. Here's the screen away. Here's the flex offense. Rogers went down screen and they were running people right off. Shot clock's down to six. Dixon looking to go. Back to the way of Cole. Cole better get it off. Cole Rogers got off in time, but the 35 second shot clock went off. Did not hit iron. Can't play any better defense than that. I mean, Ernie Kenstein is playing so hard. And uh, a nice reward for the Gales as they force a 35 second shot violation. And the zone again. Three pointer can tie. Here's Chris Johnson from the corner. It's short. Pulled down by John Riddick. St. Mary's has won 12 of their last 13 ball games, but they're down by a half dozen with 719 to go. I think Johnson has to go ahead and look for his shot. He missed the last time, but he's very effective. Cameron Sufi misses, and John really, I think, knocked it out of bounds. He did. St. Mary's will get the ball back with a new 35-second clock. Time out on the floor, 7.09 left here in the West Coast Conference final semifinal game of the night. St. Mary's down by six. Seven oh nine left. Gonzaga has a six-point lead on St. Mary's. Rita Air, the preferred airline of the West Coast Conference Tournament, winning the West over. We've had a wonderful game tonight. Both semifinals. Portland came back and won their game in the first sem men's semifinals. John really almost pulled off a steal there. And here in the second game, tied at 37. Now Gonzaga has built up a six-point lead inside seven to go. Still the matchup by Gonzaga. Until they can shoot him out of it with a three-point. This judge now comes from the strong side.
can see the confidence building with the Bulldogs. I mean, they're just playing hard, and they feel they can win this game. Here again, breaking the defense down with good penetration and cutting to the basket. Dixon has really played well in the second half uh, for Gonzaga. Sony said, don't be talking to me, move away. I don't want to have to give you a technical foul. Kyle Dixon now has 11 points. The first great Gonzaga player, Steve, I remember was a guy by the name of Frank Burgess, who was an absolute sensational player. When I was at USF, he came in, and either I was watching the game, I think it was a high school guy, and he came in and had about 42 or 3 against us, and everybody said, who is this guy? <laughs> and who's this guy, Burgess? We've got a time on the floor. We'll keep it right here as Gonzaga has pushed the lead now to eight points. And Ernie Kent saying, you know what? We cannot let this game get any further away. Six minutes is an eternity, but we have to take care of every single second. Gonzaga looking for their 20th win of the year. They had a marvelous season last year going to the NIT, and they have an eight-point advantage right now. But we've got time to visit our pal Glenn Kuyper. All right, thanks, Steve. And now that I've officially interviewed everybody in Tulsa Pavilion, there's a whole bunch of people that I'd like to thank. West Coast Conference, uh, Michael Gillerin, the commissioner of the West Coast Conference, Don Ott and Teresa Kuhn. They've been a great help to me down here at Courtside. And, of course, Power Bar doing another great job. Second year in a row that they have sponsored the West Coast Conference Tournament. And last but not least, the entire staff here at Santa Clara, Jim Young, the SID, Carol Williams, the athletic director, they've all been great. And it looks like the tournament will go off without a hitch again here at Santa Clara. And it, I've had a pleasure doing it for Sports Channel, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Fizz? Dittos from Dan and Steve, and also great work from Michael Ireland and Tommy Edza and the great crew who have been here for all three games. We've got worn out cameramen up in the corner. They have been working overtime to do this. But you know what I like about our crews out here in the West Coast? They love sports. Love sports. I thought we had another one after oh, this. Oh, man. You know what? And those guys, those tape operators, could do another double header. The sports junkies got to love it. They keep us employed. <laughs> They'll do another one from Alcapulco. I'm not sure they're going to do it from Tulsa. <laughs> they're going to join us on our Reno air flight. Prince Barris back in the game. Being defended by Dixon, and he turned it over. Kyle Dixon with the good defense. And Brent Barris trying to rip the ball away from John Riley, who tried to take it from him. 58-50. Steve, it's been the defense of Gonzaga in the second half. And they, they played exceptional man and zone defense, and they've been able to stifle the Gales. And look at the way they've executed their offense. And when you come out and challenge Gonzaga, they run back cuts, movement without the ball, and they're difficult to handle. And that might be a foul away from the ball. Johnson, you cannot lose your composure here if you're St. Mary's. You're down eight. You're under six minutes. You don't want to make any bad tight fouls. And Johnson here is trying to defend really. Now wants to push off. And the official is standing right behind him. He really does a good job of just fading backwards. And now you're getting a great free throw shooter uh, to the line. And that's exactly what Ernie Kent's going to tell him. Keep your composure. Play hard. But we, we don't need any bad fouls. It's only the first foul on Chris Johnson. Basketball game, but they'll need his three-point shooting because how good has been Zag, a very good foul shooting team, a very good shooting team, and John really is the best in the West Coast Conference this year at 87 percent. He's not going to miss. No, he, he looks automatic. We just finished doing a couple of games uh, with Oregon State and Brent Berry. He gives you the same feeling. You know, guy gets to the line and you know he will not miss a free throw. So, Matt, Here's Jamoki Horton. Loses the ball. A.J. Rollins has it. What a great play by Gonzaga. Gonzaga, what a super play inside, calling a timeout while on the ground. Scott Snyder grabbed the basketball line on his back and said, timeout. Oh, that's a heads up play. This is a heady play by Gonzaga and Snyder. The ball on the ground to have the presence of mind to know you're in trouble, go for the timeout, and the official will give it to him, and you retain possession. And Gonzaga with a 10-point lead. They have put a blitz on the Gales in the last five or six minutes. A 
Tickets are available for tomorrow night's championship game here at Toso Pavilion. It will feature a fine Portland outfit we watched today who has more than 20 wins. And if Gonzaga wins, they will have 20 victories. St. Mary still has time. 527 to go down 10. There are still tickets available, right? No well, is Reno Air providing transportation for people from Portland and Spokane? Because now right away they should. This could be this is a no, this could be an all north west final right here. You got Gonzaga and Portland. There may be some people flying in for this one. Maybe from Toowoomba, Australia. And uh, Steve John Rilly. Steve, they will not be coming from Toowoomba, Australia. <laughs> you never know. Okay, John Rilly, though, is worth the price of admission. Really? Oh, no, really. Kyle Dixon. John Rilly. How would you like to be trailing Gonzaga knowing you have to come out and foul guys and really has the ball all the time? This is a time when you're in Gonzaga's shoes. You want your best players to handle the ball, put some touches on it, and try to run really off the screen and then maybe down screen for him to pop him out. Shot clock at eight, so now you have to start executing and creating. So St. Mary's will get the basketball. Ernie Pence's defense was marvelous that time. Well, really has to look to go ahead and make something happen. Of course, the Gales denied him the ball, which was uh, very good defense. And as you said, Steve, they have to make something happen right now. Run their offense, get their spacing, look for some penetration. Sufi has not penetrated from the point at all. All he's doing really is passing the ball back and forth. Chris Johnson has missed his last four three-pointers. They've got Johnson, Sufi, and Unruh in the game. They're very good three-point shooters, but Chris Johnson, one of the very best in the league, has really been gone cold. That low Ferris. Oh, tough shot by Brad Ferris. He is fouled by Snyder. Well, if Gonzaga is going to allow the ball to go down to Ferris, Ferris is a guy that could set, it, set up a three-point shot because the defense will collapse on him. So if he goes ahead and looks to kick it out, Sufi has to step in a bit, get, get a little bit more proactive in terms of looking to do something. Because you cannot just throw the ball from side to side at the point. You have to have somebody out there that's willing to take the ball, either penetrate or go ahead and look for your shot. They're taking Jamoki Horton out of the game for A.J. Robbins back in. Gonzaga with foul trouble. Red right and blue right has four. Schneider has four. And for Schneider is just unruly four fouls. Of course, they take Jamoki out of the game for defense because now they can put a quicker team in. See, St. Mary's asked a question. They're going to go full court press with Rollins, and they have a little bit more speed. See if Dixon. Oh, Dixon's not going to back. I thought he might back that one out. A little bit of a break for St. Mary's if they can go ahead and get a quick shot. Sufi looking for the three, and then really got in his face. Andrew turns it inside to Brett Ferris, who powers it up and misses. And a foul we call on Scott Snyder, and he is gone. Snyder has fouled out of the game. That's a real 
break for Gonzaga. And you have to have possession, and that ball is only deflected. Seven point lead. Three and a half to go. A shove on Snyder. And I'm going to wait for the call here. They had him on four before when he fell. He's walking off the floor. Wave at me. He's, he's got him for foul out. Yeah, he, he's waving. He's taking his jersey up. So they can say he's fouled out. Fans say he's fouled out. See ya. Scott Snyder really playing some strong defense on Jamoki Horton tonight. Dan Fitzgerald uh, smartly will take his full minute before he substitutes. Here, here's the beautiful save. And I guess the official will contend that that was a possession situation because it certainly looked like a 10 second violation the other way. Snyder will be back next year. He's a junior. The two that Gonzaga will lose, Jason Rubrak and most valuable player, John Rilly. That's a big loss, Steve. <laughs> okay, really, when you lose him, you know, that's a big one. Dan Fitzgerald sure always seems to come up with another three-point shooter out of that Pacific Northwest Wait, or in this Tawamba. case, the land down under. Woomba. To Woomba. He would go to Australia to get Just go right in that recruiting base. St. Mary's trying to fight back in this game. They've cut the lead to six. It was ten of them. Andrew Rodgers makes it both. We've got ourselves a five-point ball game. Now the trap. See if you can rotate quickly. And a foul on Brent Ferris. And the best foul shooter. The West Coast Conference will hit to the foul line 87%. He has. That's the third foul on Brent Barris. Barris may shoot 87%, but Steve, I'd like to know what he shoots in the last three minutes of games. It might be closer to 97. This is a guy that you call all net. See, he is he's, he's like Deion Cross at Stanford. When you shoot free throws, it doesn't count if he hits the rim. So he has to make a perfect switch like he did the last two. Otherwise, it's, it does not count as a goal. And that's, that's a good free throw shooter he is. There's Chris Johnson around the suit to get it in the lane for Brent Ferris. And another foul is called this time against Paul Rogers. Let's play some defense, not push people in the back. Let's move our feet and do a more effective job. And this really, now that's a big miss because it really does not allow St. Mary's to get into their full court action. The lead is seven for Gonzaga with three minutes and nine seconds left in this ball game. Cannot get too conservative yet if you're Gonzaga. He did get hit in the face, but he already charged, and Paul Rogers has fouled out. So now two big men for Gonzaga fouled out. Paul Rogers and Scott Snyder. He really has to look to shoot that shot, Steve. I mean, he's the guy that has to make things happen. I thought a pretty good call. Yeah. Rollins steps in there, but really had the open shot. And the young guy is very unselfish, but in that case, late in the game, he has to look to take it over. He must make the big shot. Three minutes to play. A seven-point lead for Gonzaga. The, the two big post players have fouled out in Scott Snyder and in Paul Rogers. And their other one, Jason Rubright, has to come back in the game that he's playing with four fouls. You're going to foul somebody. He's the man. Got to pick up the ball. You're going to foul second count. Good job by Sufi, though, to let some... Uh, about that clock start just to give his gales an extra three or four seconds. Chris Johnson's got a spot. You know, Chris Johnson has to look at the goal. Like I say, if he's open, let it go. Because the shot clock now winds down. That's a long run. And he misses A.J. Rogers down like the basketball. But over his back was Gonzaga. And they would keep it in the hands of the St. Mary's Gales. 
six left. Seven point Bulldog lead. Nice pass by Unruh inside. He, he saw the defense not alert. Made a quick pass to Johnson. School in San Jose. We talked about he's going to West Valley Junior College. He averaged 60 points per game for the number one ranked team in the state. Now they're not going to lose the pass. That's Johnson. Oh, this is Burns. Kidlock rebounds. So that's a four point swing. Just like a turnover in that situation. Uh, those are throws you have to get down if you're St. Mary's. Now they're going to come back and rely on their defense. Harris has it. Ahead to Sue. Chris Johnson spotting up for three. This is again A.J. Rollins. No foul call, and A.J. staring at the official. Where was the foul? As Chris Johnson does get the foul. Chris Johnson has been ice cold from three-point range this second half. Now, both teams not finishing. Here, Johnson spotting up. Gets a good look. Rollins, good rebound inside. There was some contact and no call, and there's the over-the-back call. And again, you're getting Mr. Automatic to the foul line. He has 28 points tonight. He now has 60 points in the two games of this West Coast Conference tournament. Oh, man. That was an upset. Shot that ball quickly, and he backed off the line. He's got to stay up on that line. Critical for the Gales. They just have not been able to execute at the offensive end. Oh, and they've got some good looks at the shots. They've executed their offense where they've allowed themselves to get fouled, but then they miss the five foul shots. If they make the five foul shots, they're within one point. Instead, John Willie really has a chance for 30 points, and he's got 29 right now. Oh, you can't hope that uh, Willie's really going to miss any more if you're St. Mary's. 
Now Dan Fitzgerald's gonna take his whole team off the foul line just to set up his defense and wait the Gales coming down the floor. An eight-point lead for Gonzaga. Inside a minute to play. Cameron Sufi's gotta pick up that basketball. I'm thinking for Gonzaga, they're not even guarding Sufi. Sufi's not looking to shoot it, they're just kind of backing off it. Chris Johnson has missed his seventh straight three-pointer. six-point game with 33 seconds left in the ball game so Ernie Kent takes time out well the game was over there for Gonzaga I mean had they gotten that rebound and been able to come down before they're gonna get a foul yeah. Dan Fitzgerald knew it now there's still a glimmer of hope for St. Mary's and St. Mary's the one guy you can't foul John Reilly Gonzaga trying to make it an all Pacific Northwest Final tomorrow night for the West Coast Conference Championship. Portland already beat Loyola Marymount. And here's the reset. If there's a hell ball, St. Mary's will have it. Two timeouts for Gonzaga and both teams in the double bonus situation. John really has been such a major story in this game. 30 points. 30 of his teams, 65. See if St. Mary's looks for the steal right away, Steve. They do a nice job. They hope they get it. They look like they're going off. Of Gonzaga. Oh, all Gonzaga had to do was get the ball in bounds. You know, they get a foul right away. But the Gales, tenacious there defensively, get the steal. All they're trying to do is bounce it in. But look at the ball go off the Gonzaga player out of bounds. And a good call by the official. So they get Jason Bond back in the game for his defense. Three would really be nice. That would make it a one possession game for St. Mary's to get it back and try and tie. So Chris Johnson gets it out to Sufi. He'll take the three. Miss. And Rube Wright rebounds. Situation, the possession officers, it's still St. Mary's basketball. Again, but Cheryl has to be thinking, we've been at that end of the floor for quite a while. <laughs> I mean, we, we have not been able to get the ball over half court. Will St. Mary's now run an effective play to, to free up Johnson? He's had some shots, he could not get them down. They're actually, uh, they don't have too many more opportunities. This one has to go down for St. Mary's, or they're not going to win this game. This one is a must score. Sufi turns it over. And the foul will be called. And now, 13 Sufi rallies his troops while Ernie Ken thinks of what he can do in the last 17 seconds to, to come back in this game trailing by six points. And John Kinlock uh, and the foul shooter for line at 77%. It's hard to beat somebody three times in a year. Very, very difficult. I mean, certainly the motivation is with the team that's lost twice. And uh, Gonzaga playing a very efficient second half, although neither team really has played very well in the last three or four minutes. I mean, there have been opportunities for Gonzaga to win this game by 10, 12 points. And certainly St. Mary's has had its chances to overcome this uh, the deficit, but neither club has really been able to effectively run their offense and take care of the ball. And I know we talked about individually St. Mary's matched up with Gonzaga very well. As a matter of fact, individually, they probably had the advantage. But their team defense that Gonzaga displayed in that second half really just wore out St. Mary's. I thought they negated uh, anything that Jamoki Horton wanted inside. And the Gales were unable to score around the goal consistently. Ferris did get some nice opportunities, but uh, there were not enough of them. And uh, John really, with his outside play, and Gonzaga with their free throw shooting down the stretch, uh, really have been too much for St. Mary's. A great win for Dan Fitzgerald and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Brent Ferris will take the three. Miss one. I think they've missed their last 11 three-pointers. And here is a foul called against Chris Johnson. With eight seconds left, the lead is eight points for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. So for the second straight year, Dan Fitzgerald's team will be heading to that championship round. Watch this. This is the crowd who's right behind us. He's pointing to Thank you very much for coming down from Spokane, Washington. 
Uh, he's a terrific guy. Started with the ball club in 1978, left in, what, after the 1981 season to concentrate on being an athletic director. I, I simply think he missed it so much he had to come back. He is a basketball coach who came back in 85 and has been coaching the team ever since. He had a big advantage, Steve. See, he rehired himself. <laughs> he, had a long, he, he had a long talk and said, you know what? I'm going to rehire myself and come back and coach this team. And the Sufi missing everything except the backboard, and it's claimed by Brian Driscoll. And Chris Johnson's team is going to the as Dan Fitzgerald is going back to the West Coast Conference Tournament Championship game to battle Portland tomorrow night. John Rilly, the leading candidate for most valuable player honors in this tournament, another 30 points after 32 last night and a brilliant display from three-point range, six of seven from outside the arc. Yeah, he, he just made the all-American postseason conference tournament team with, with this performance. The Gales only with 59 points. And historically under Ernie Kent, when they don't score more than 82, they have lost like 70% of the time. And this is how they got here. Portland had to beat Pepperdine and Loyola Marymount to get to the championship game. And Gonzaga had to beat San Diego and now St. Mary's. And so it will be Portland against Gonzaga. And everybody's excited behind us because the Bulldogs are going. Who do you like tomorrow night? Well, I, I like, I like uh, Portland tomorrow night. I think Portland will come out strong. I, I, I like the way they're playing. They switched their defense. I think from an athletic standpoint, uh, they're a little bit stronger than Gonzaga. But Gonzaga, remember this, Steve, they're a tempo team. If they can set the tempo, run their offense, keep the score in the 60s, uh, then that is right in their alley. So congratulations to the Bulldogs. What a big win for them. And the Portland Pilots, so a very impressive ball club. You like what Robbie Chavez has done up there. So Dan Fitzgerald, extremely heavy. That's a good guy to put your arm around. That guy really, because he is for real. 62 points in the two games. Our champions in the women's bracket, USF. And in our tournament finale, it will be Gonzaga tomorrow night. For Dan Bill Wamany, I'm Steve Fiziak saying so long, everyone. <laughs>